Welcome to the Money Mastermind Show. Let's talk money. And welcome to the Money Mastermind Show. Positive thinking. Is it just a bunch of hooey or is it something that can actually help you? Joining us tonight to talk about the power of positive thinking and reaching your financial goals are the debt-free guys, David and John. Welcome to our show, guys. Thank you. Thanks Hello. for having us. Thank you. Glad to have you here. And to introduce the, the members of the Money Mastermind Show, we have Kyle Prevo of youngandthrifty.ca, Miranda Marquit of Planting Money Seeds, Peter Anderson of Bible Money Matters, Tom Drake of the Canadian Finance Blog, and I'm Glenn Craig of Free From Broke. So, guys, positive thinking, can it really do good for your financial goals? Let's throw it out to our debt-free guys first, and then we'll work from there. <laughs> Thanks. We appreciate that. Um, yeah, we do, we do think it can have a positive effect on your finances. We don't think that you can rely solely on positive thinking. Um, as uh, the Bible says, faith without works is dead, and we still think that. Uh, as much positive thinking as you have, you still have to put forth the, the work and the effort to achieve whatever your goals are, whether it's uh, finance related or any any other relationship. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll add to what John just said. You look at a lot of situations that you can get into, um, whether it's you're angry at someone or you've had a bad day at work or your kids are driving you crazy, uh, whatever it may be, you're, maybe you're depressed and then somebody tells you a joke or somebody calls you and says thank you or tells you a, good, a great story and it completely changes your mind, it changes your outlook, it changes your attitude and so that's kind of the impetus or the kind of the idea behind what we start out with with positive thinking is that is there's, there is a way to change what you're thinking about your finances today if you're in a negative space and move it to a positive space and that is kind of the spark that gets you going to make the change to do something better. So it's got to be a little bit more than just maybe a, a feel-good technique though, right? I mean, you know, just a, a good joke or, or a good story, That's there's got to be more to it than, than that to get you really moving along. Like how, how does that actually integrate into getting towards your financial goals? I think back to um, to when John and I were first getting out of uh, or realizing that we were in the situation we were in. Uh, John and I had uh, had been together for about a year. Uh, we had fifty one thousand dollars in credit card debt. We were living in a basement apartment. Uh, we were driving two mediocre cars, and at the same time, we were working for a financial services firm, helping other people figure out what they were supposed to do with their money, and. We were looking around and we were seeing a lot of our friends were uh, buying their first homes or condos. They were uh, taking vacations, although we were, we were doing that. We were doing a lot of things we probably shouldn't have been. But it, it, we got to this point where it, we started to really kind of get a little depressed, a little down and say, what's, what's wrong with us? Why are we in this situation? You know, how can we make a change? And uh, it, it really wasn't until we decided to to really start thinking about the successes and where we wanted to be, the goals that we had, uh, that really helped us to start turn, turning our lives our lives around. And we could have let that whole negative space, negative uh, situation hang on us, but we didn't. We always kept out in front of us our goals. And one of the things that I have always done, and, and uh, when I get into a negative space, and I did a... Monday Money Minute. We do a Monday Money Minute video on our website every Monday, and uh, I did a Monday Money vi Minute video on this recently about how um, gratitude is one of the biggest things that can change your attitude from going from negative to positive. And that's really kind of where John and I started looking at our lives and lives and saying, "Yeah, we have fifty-one thousand dollars in credit card debt, but aren't we fortunate that we?" We have two cars that get us to work, that we have jobs, that we have a place to live. It really kind of, like I said earlier, it's the spark that kind of got us going and it's the fuel that kept us going while we had to maybe make some choices in our lives that weren't the most fun that allowed us to get out of debt. 
So I, I agree that it's a it's not it's more than just a, a happy thought. It's a regular regularly practicing a way of thinking that helps you get there. Do you want to add something? Anything no, to that, John? No, I, I think that's all true. You know, I think power of positive thinking. It, it isn't about being delusional. You know, it's about giving yourself that spark of hope so you can focus on the opportunities and make the most of that, as opposed to uh, focusing on the negative and, and, and working off of fear. Which I think, you know, not paying attention to our finances and being delusional is what got us into our financial straits. Um, that little bit of hope that we had is what helped us focus on the opportunity that we had and turn that opportunity into a success. So I have a question for you. Um, what happens sometimes even when you're trying to be positive or trying to move forward or trying to do what you know you're supposed to do, uh, sometimes life kind of gets in the way and everything starts to kind of um, pile up on you a little bit. So what um, what do you do when, when you can't seem to uh, make that space around you to find that positivity and, and you're kind of drowning in negativity? I, I, like, do you have any uh, advice for somebody who's there? That may or may not be yeah. me. <laughs> so. A friend of yours? Friend? <laughs> Ask a friend. Totally a friend of mine. Totally I know this person. Help us off the ledge. <laughs> so not speaking to anybody directly. Um, yeah, you know, we're, we're certainly not perfect. You know, David and I are, are trying to start our own business with Debt Free Guys. At the same time, we're both working for financial services firms, um, which take at best 40 hours a week, if not longer. Um, and our, day, our, our side hustle takes uh, you know, as much of that time as anything. So we, it's, it's hard for us to go to wake up at 4.30 in the morning, do our side hustle work, go to our day job, come home and do some more of our side hustle work. Um, we easily get into a negative space. And I think last night was a prime example. You know, we got home from a long day of work and both of us just wanted to plunk down on the couch, eat some fried food, and watch Friends on Netflix. <laughs> um, but we, we were in a bad space, and we knew we had to turn that around. So we actually um, you know, decided to watch some um, positive thinking videos on uh, 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 YouTube. And in the power of, like, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes, we were, our moods had completely changed. We were focused on our, our long-term goals. And I think our advice to, to those who are in that space is to um, you know, seek out that positive feedback, whether it's... YouTube or a positive friend, uh, great friends uh, through the personal finance blogging space who are superbly positive, and so we, you know, reaching out to them, um, you know, helps us out a lot as well. So, build your circle of, of of protection, I guess I would say, and rely on those people to help you out in in your time of need. Yeah, you know, I, I think the the power of positive thinking, you know, it, it's a lot of times it's just going to come down to a decision that you're making a decision to make positive choices or to think positively. Um, I, like, I like a quote from Zig Ziglar. He, he says that uh, positive thinking will let you do everything better than negative thinking will. And it's just, right. you know, no matter what it is, you, you have to make that choice to, hey, I'm going to I'm gonna sit down, I'm going to realize I'm in a negative place, and I'm going to try to do something positive. I'm going to try to have an attitude of gratitude. I'm going to watch these videos on YouTube and try to pick my mood up. I'm gonna do something for someone else. I'm gonna go and, and uh, you know go to the local soup kitchen and, and hand out some meals this weekend or something along those lines. When you can get outside of yourself and, and uh, think about somebody else, I think a lot of times that, that can be a great way to start. But uh, but again, it's it's just uh, you have to make that choice. You know, a lot of people make the negative choice. You know, they they decide to wallow in their their depression and and so forth and. They'll use that as a, a catalyst for, for negative spending, and, and uh, you know, they'll go out and do a bunch of shopping to pick up their mood, and they get the quick high, but then it ends up being tons of credit card debt or whatever. So, yeah, absolutely. You know, I think you know, when, when I'm feeling unhealthy, um, you know, after the holidays or, or because I'm depressed and I'm letting myself eat anything, I will let any opportunity let me eat anything. I'll, I'll find any excuse to eat that chocolate cupcake with my coffee in the morning. But if I, if I, I could, that's a decisive decision that I make. Um, you know, but if I'm feeling healthy and I'm focused on two. on being a better person, <laughs> no, uh, one and a half. <laughs> but if, if I'm focused on being healthy, I can I can stick to my diet regimen. I can stick to my exercising, um, and I won't I, I won't succumb to that chocolate muffin. But um, you know, it's a decide. To, you have to decide. I think in general, positivity is sort of a habit and a practice in itself, isn't it? 
you know, you have to, the more momentum you have doing it, the easier it is to be in it. And like the, you know, the stronger your shield is, so to speak, you know, but how does that person who doesn't have that habit built up yet, you know, where, you know, it's easy for somebody who, who's pretty positive or maybe he's gone through some tough things and came out of it to say, you know what, it's really not that bad. But the person who's deep down kind of wallowing in it, they don't always see that light. So how, how do you reach that person? How do you get to them and say, you know, how do I get out of this? Where's the, where's the light at the end of the tunnel? Uh, I'll take that. Uh, um, traditionally in my past, I wasn't uh, that much of a positive person. Uh, unfortunately, my family uh, suffers from seasonally adjusted depression. My mother uh, heavily suffers from this, and I know that I have that, um, whether it's psychosomatic because I know that she has it and that I have it, but um, it wasn't until a couple of years ago that really things started to change significantly for me. And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that John and I really started to focus aggressively on what we wanted to do with debt free guys. And um, it was the small successes on a regular basis that really helped me remind myself that life is getting better. My life is getting better. I'm changing things. Um, I have a reason to live. I have a reason to do something today. Uh, I think about all of the successful people that we we know in the world, whether it's a, a business leader or someone we know um, spiritually or somebody we know uh, uh, in politics. When we look at those positive people, those successful people, oftentimes we look at them and they have uh, set an example of doing things in a positive way. Uh, you know, you, you don't think of a depressed person as being a CEO of a company or being a spiritual leader or being a politician and leading cities or governments. It's that because they have that uh, impetus to try to drive to doing more. And so that's really kind of what I suggest to someone who is um, – who suffers from depression or suffers from negative negativity is set a series of small goals, small things that you can do that give you that little boost that says, yes, I've done it. You know, a lot of times, a lot of negativity comes from uh, our self-worth, what we think of who we are inside. And when you start to have those small achievements, they, you know, whether it's exercise or saving money or paying off your debt or it, having a good relationship with your kids or your spouse or whatever, set some small goals. And as you tick those goals off, you'll be amazed at how that changes your attitude towards just general things in life. That's one of the things that I, you know, I always have to remind myself when I get into a negative space and I have to remind myself, these are really good things I have going for me. I know it gets a little fluffy sometimes, but if that's what's going to help me get through this afternoon, that's what's going to help me get through this afternoon because I know tomorrow I'm going to be more successful if I do it. <laughs> you know, it's an interesting thing you mentioned gratitude and that you were in $51,000 in credit card debt. I mean, but even that, you know, you, I guess you could frame it in a way like, you know what, we live in a place where we can be in $51,000 in credit card debt like that's really kind of a first world problem, <laughs> you know. Like that actually buys you a bunch of stuff around to play around with, you know. I mean, you know, it, as long as you're not uh in some seriously bad debt, you know, somebody's out to get you somehow, or you know. But really, it's it's it's, it's, it, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a privileged position, you know. You're not hiking ten miles each day just to get water, you know. Worried about mosquitoes, <laughs> malaria. It's like. I spent too much. That's kind of crazy. Right. Um, so I, you know, I see how how it is that you, that you're just framing it. Um, what do you think about just your environment and positivity versus negativity? Um, I know sometimes it, it could be the people that you're around who have a definite play on the way that you think. You know, sometimes you could even be trying to get out of whatever, and then everybody just says, "No, it's not going to work. Don't bother with it." And I think all of us, as, as entrepreneurs of a sort, um, we face that in some way, shape, or form, and that can certainly play into it. How do we avoid that? Yeah, I think we had to make a decisive, decisive decision um, to, you know, push some people a little bit further outside of our, our lives. Um, unfortunately, because they were either in a negative space or they were uh, negatively influencing us. 
um, you know, our, our goals have kind of changed, and so we've had to focus on what our long-term goals are and put aside what our short-term um, wants are. Um, so that, that we had to make that decision, and, and it's been tough. Uh, it's it's sometimes it requires a delicate balance in trying to um, give uh, extend relationships with people uh, when we have uh, the free time to do so, and then focus on what our long-term goals are a little bit more. But um, if you if you have negative people in your life consistently who are negative in your life, um, our suggestion would be to you know try to push those people o away a little bit, not not cut off all ties necessarily, and and certainly you don't want to be rude or mean. Um, and if you have the opportunity to be able to try to help them change their their thinking, that that'd be great. But you have to focus on yourself so you can achieve your own successes. Yeah, I mean, have you ever run across the person who? You know, it seems like they are always complaining about something. Something bad is always happening to them, and it just seems like the world is out to get them, or at least in their own opinion. You know, it's yeah. kind of, um, I've seen it repeatedly. And sometimes, hey, look, no matter what, it feels like that. But, you know, it, I, I always find that it's, it's that, that sort of feeling like, you know, everybody's doing wrong to me, but there's no, like, I've done something wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I think being negative um, and thinking that every, the world is against you in whatever shape or form that might be for you is, is a coping mechanism for some people. I think it's an addiction for some people. Um, you know, some people like drama in their life. Um, you, know, you can look, go through Facebook and you can probably point out some people's friends. And <laughs> it's just a constant drama, and those are the people that I have to put on the do not follow list. <laughs> you know, because you know, it's just a little bit too heavy. Um, so I think some people are addicted to that, and we've had negative friends in our lives, and we've helped tried to help them as best that we can um, to help them turn that around. But if you if you can't influence them enough, if they're too much of a negative impact on you, I think you definitely have to step away or or step aside a little bit, at least for the time being. Yeah, you know, I mean, one thing about the negative emotions too is that it those negative emotions can be so intense. Uh, you know, Maggie Baker, PhD and author of Crazy About Money, she in her study she found that negative emotions hit you with an intensity that's two and a half times as strong as positive emotions. So it's they're just so intense and they you know, and the reason for that a lot of times is because they're signaling that there's a disturbance or something that you should be tending to in your life. But when you have people around you that have those negative emotions, it's gonna be affecting you in one way or another, you know, and it's usually not in a good way. So it is something to consider. Either your own negative emotions or somebody else's, they're going to be affecting you even greater than a positive emotion in your own life. And one of the things that I'm trying to avoid it right now is falling into the, um, kind of the victim trap where you're like, oh, there's nothing I can do. Uh, I'm stuck like this. Um, and I think that kind of happens with money too. You get into this trap where you're like, "Oh, there's nothing I can do about this." There's, there's, you know, when you had your fifty-one thousand dollars of credit card debt, you know, I'm sure there were days you were looking at it like this mountain and being like, "I will never <laughs> get beyond this." So I think, I think that's one of the traps we kind of tend to fall into as well as where we kind of give up some of our power, where we we don't realize that we have this power. We're blinded to the fact that we have this power and. In, in a lot of ways, we kind of need to step back and say, no, wait, I, I can affect my life. At the very least, I can affect how I respond to it. I think it kind of made made me think of, this is kind of humorous, the, the scene in uh, The Princess Bride, The Pit of Despair. <laughs> 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 and, you know, he's only half dead or he's only mostly, mostly dead. Mostly dead. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that that's, you know, that's kind of the way we have to look at things in life if you know, if you are not dead, you're only mostly <laughs> dead, <laughs> and a, you can get better. <laughs> um, but it, it's you, you, um, that you can let the negativity weigh you down. I, I think that um, I, I, I want to say that this was a parable, and I don't know whether it was in the Bible or if it's just a Aesop fable or something. And I think about the the weed that chokes the the flower or chokes the the. The vine. the vine or whatever it that's is to try that's trying to grow and that's what um, your negative thoughts can do to any positivity that you have or that's what negative people's influence can do to you and so whatever it is if you can extract that you're going to be providing yourself with so much more opportunity to grow yeah, yeah I mean Briefly thinking of Monty Python also. <laughs> 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 just like seeing the night going, 
It's just but a flesh wound. Right. Positive thinking. Right. Right. You've lost your arm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it, I, I think a lot of times these negative emotions too. You know, talk earlier about you know how maybe they, a negative emotion or something might be signaling that something is wrong. So it's not necessarily bad to pay attention to those things, but you know, when you do start to wallow in those negative feelings and so forth, that's when it becomes a real problem. You know, a good way to go about it maybe is to you know, when something negative happens or you're feeling negative, to kind of reframe that emotional trigger that you're having and turn it into something productive. You know, feeling negative about having a bunch of debt, you know, think about it for a few minutes, but don't let yourself think about it for more than five minutes or something. And then, you know, think about something productive you can do to help f fix that situation. So reframe that negative emotion and try to turn it into something positive. Right. Well, I can... Uh... In David and John's case, like, did you guys sort of focus on the the fifty thousand plus in debt, or, or did you work more on those goals, like, like, and more positively thinking, oh, we just paid off an extra thousand dollars this month, or something like that? Like, yeah, we we learned to focus more on the 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 little things and turn them into bigger successes. David is um, a numbers junkie and had a Excel spreadsheet for us with this fifty one thousand dollars worth at the top that we had to pay off, and it seemed insurmountable at times. But um, you know, we could pay off a credit card, and that was a success. Uh, you know, and gave ourselves a treat for that. We could pay off a thousand dollars, and that was another success. And we slowly chipped away at, at it, and we realized the longer we focused on the success, and the less we focused on the mountain we had to overcome, the easier the struggle was. Um, and you know, then we started to share our successes with our friends and family, and that just kind of made everything even better. Um, and we realized there, there would be times that we would be in spaces, uh, you know, we wouldn't get the promotion or raise that we wanted, um, or we, you know, we, we didn't stick with our budget the way we had planned, and we would be kind of depressed about that. But we had to pull each other up out of um, out of our depression and, and, and stay focused on the positive. And I'm just going to interject here for a sec. If you are watching us live, uh, head to our event page, and there's a Q&A app there. If you have a question about using positivity for your financial goals, Please ask it, and we'd be happy to uh, attack that question. Um, but to to go back into what you you were talking about there, I think um, the power of other people's stories and what other people have gone through um, is very strong. Like you, you could get a lot out of that because I think a lot of times when you're when you're negative or depressed, you kind of think that you're the only person that's done this. You know, like I'm the only one in debt. I'm the only one that's got a lot of credit card debt. And then you hear from other people, and you go okay, you know what, it's not such a, a crazy thing. I'm not the only one, and other people do get out of it. And that that in itself, just knowing that there's other people kind of in the same situation as you, um, is a powerful way to just at least jumpstart your way out of it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when we decided to get out of debt and we started to search on the Internet about ways to do so, before that we had no idea that there was this whole blogosphere of personal finance people, many of whom are struggling to get out of debt or have gotten out of debt themselves. And so it was an eye-opener to, to us to realize, you know, we're not this, just like everybody else. There's a lot of people who are like us. Um, our friends may be an anomaly or maybe they're hiding the truth. Uh, we don't know. But it was just it was just really heartwarming to know that, that we weren't struggling alone. So that, that And that's how we eventually got into you know, the, the writing of, about personal finance and our situation in books and blogging um, was because we saw, wow, other people are doing it, so we can too. I think that that's a similar story when you, you talk to a good number of personal finance bloggers. You know, um, I, I know for myself, it was just getting out of my own debt and getting my head around personal finances. And then in doing my own research, found that, yeah, there are, like you said, other, there's, there's outlets out there that talk about similar things. And then going, you know what, I have some information that I could share too because I've gone through this. You know, and then you want to help other people, at least through your own stories. So that is pretty powerful. So if somebody's out there listening, you know, you're not alone. Go find situations that are similar to you. And you just might, at least if you don't find a support group, um, you could find the answer. You know, there's lots of things out there. So make sure you go out there and, and find it, find the right things. Um, but how do you how do you transfer that positivity to the actual work now? You know, a lot of people say, you know, if you just think it, it's going to come. You know, there's that sort of, idea of positivity and I, I don't know whether it's a hundred percent true or false you know th there's maybe some truth to it and maybe some hooiness to it um, but you know th there's that if I just hope somehow 
is going to come back to me. You know, what's the what's the range on that, for lack of a better uh, description? I, I I'll take a take that one. I, I think that um, there's a there is a lot of, and I'm just going to say it. There is a lot of hooey out there when it comes to positive <laughs> thinking. Um, I, I I know you mentioned earlier about the whole Porsche thing. I, I think that there's there's a lot of people out there who believe that the more I think about something, the more it's going to happen. Well, that's true only if you do something with it. We we, we already had the comment about faith without works. Um, the, the more you think about something, the more positively you think about something, the reason why you pos- think about it positively is because it then motivates you to do something. It makes you want to make a change or it makes you want to stop your spending. It makes you want to uh, to start investing or saving money for that goal that you want. Uh, so the the work has to come in there. There's uh, it, it, it's very easy to get kind of lax. Uh, I think that there's kind of basically three mental attitudes out there. There's a negative mental attitude, uh, which is a detractor. Often, uh, you know, P- Peter, you said that the spending thing that it's a downward downward spiral of spending, and I think that there's a lot of destructive behaviors around negativity, negative thinking, and then there's the meh thinking, you know, just you just don't care. Some days you're good, some days you're bad, or just doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, oh, if I get a raise this year, yeah, yeah. Um, Sounds like the facts of life. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, it did kind of sound like the facts of life. <laughs> but, but then it's, you know, it's it's the person who has that that, that drive, that motivation, that positive thinking. Um, they're the, going to be the ones who actually put the steps in motion. And they're going to be the one that creates that checklist of these are the things I need to do today to get from step A to A.1. And A.1 leads to eventually B, and that's where I want to be. Uh, so it's that power of motivation that um, drives us. And it, it has to start with somebody saying, I want to be somewhere different than where I am right now. And that is, that is a positive thinking attitude when you say, I want to be somewhere better than I am today. Yeah, but I like how you talk about making the plan because um, I do think that there are a lot of people who do sit around and kind of say, oh, well, I do want to be someplace else and then just sit there and say, oh, I just want to be someplace else and just kind of <laughs> let that fall. <laughs> like, just, <laughs> and, and, and it just sort of reminded me too when, when you were kind of talking about like uh, the Bible and biblical principles. Uh, I knew somebody once who said a long time ago, they said, oh, well, you know, a tithe should be 10%. Uh, of what you, you you earn to give to God. So what you need to do is prepay your tithing. So pay tithing on the, the income that you think you want. And then uh, it, it's like magic. God bless you with that income. And I was just going, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I don't know if that's how it works. There goes my whole salary. <laughs> <laughs> that that you know, kind of floats into like some John Oliver territory about his <laughs> oh, yeah, that's about churches. <laughs> Um, you know, as long as I get my share first. I mean, not to not to say you know that there's there's definitely something to you know if you have a certain goal, take that money first. You know, pay yourself first or pay you know tithing or whatever it is first. But it just sounds kind of funny when you like come up with an amount and then everything else will follow. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, a, that's something that blew my mind about yeah, it. It's like, oh well, if you want, if you want to make five thousand dollars this month, you know, do your five hundred dollars to God for this month first, and then He'll bless you with that. I'm like, I think the promise is you'll have what you need. It's not like it's not like that. I'm gonna put yeah, in my a... request here. He just promises you'll have what you need. That doesn't mean you're gonna yeah. get a certain dollar amount. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, exactly. There's a, there's a point when positive thinking turns into magical thinking, you know, where where you're just believing something is going to happen when there's no real reason why it should happen. You know, positive thinking is best when it's, when it's a catalyst, when it starts a chain reaction of, you know, giving you the motivation you need in order to start making plans for your future, to set a budget, find new ways to make money, uh, start a side business or whatever. It's best when it, it's that catalyst to start that process, you know, not when it's everything, you know, I'm going to think positive and, and positive things are going to happen. Right. Yeah, we're, we're talking about productive positive thinking, not not the secret and the law of attraction or, or myth or whatever it is. <laughs> or, or like the beginning of like any, you know, Disney film where you hear when you wish upon a star, you know. 
Like all of a sudden, it's just gonna come if if the right thing happens, and Prince Charming is gonna come and take you away and solve all your problems. Oh, I got my Prince Charming. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> but did he show up because of a glass slipper or because? Uh, can't talk about that. Now, you know, I'm 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 guessing there was some work involved, and and, and probably some work to to maintain it. Oh, I um, it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, back it, to the right, topic. Steering back to the real conversation. <laughs> uh, all of us can can put those uh, scenarios into our head where we know it's actually never going to happen. You know, I, I I can't say that I am going to ever beat Usain Bolt in a race. I may want to really, really bad, and I can think about it all I want to, but it's never going to happen. You know, and so it, it, you, you hit it on the head of where is the productive step forward? Where is the productive positive thinking? Uh, where is that? Uh, what what conversation am I going to have in my head? What story am I going to play out that is positive and achievable for me for the skills that I have? And that's that's really what it's about is that next step towards where you really want to get to. Yeah, I mean, that's a great example. We think about athletes, and you can watch them at the Olympics or before their game. They're oftentimes mentally visualizing their win, and that's 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 a power of positive thinking. They're they're, they're not sitting there thinking, oh, how am I going to lose this game? Um, you know, unless you're, I don't know. The Broncos. The Broncos. <laughs> <laughs> not this year. Um, <laughs> But you know they're they're oftentimes th sitting there thinking. About we have a version of that here. They're called the Jets, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they're they're oftentimes thinking about how they're going to win that game, or they're going to win that event, or or or, or land that move. Um, they're not thinking negatively. So you know I think that's 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 an, that should be an inspiration or an example for us. Whatever our goal is, whether it's you know with money or finance or our career or um, you know our whatever is within our circle of influence. Um, and that's the power of positive thinking, of, of imagining yourself winning that event of yours, whatever that might be, um, so that you can put forth the work and the steps to, to achieve those things. So it's like you're working on a, a, a muscle memory of sorts, you know, like an athlete has that in case they're they're just, for whatever reason, their bodies just move where they have to move. So when you're, you're always thinking, you know, framing things positively, um, your thoughts kind of go in that direction anyway. You don't get sucked down into the... To the black hole, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's true. And to the to the question earlier about how do you overcome the beginning struggles of trying to start think, thinking positively, it's just the power. I guess the power of repetition, and eventually that muscle memory will will start to react sooner and sooner, and um, it'll become easier and easier. So you just kind of have to overcome that hurdle, just like you know getting to the gym that first two or three or four times. It's like the your neural plasticity changes. Yeah. And I'm going to use yes. those big words. <laughs> I'm going to use those big words because, because the next thing I was going to say is like in Dumb and Dumber when they're like, but they're still a kid, right? Balance. Oh, dear. Um, <laughs> no, I, I just remember somebody, I think it was in school, a teacher, who said there was like a big difference between impossible and improbable. You know, <laughs> Tell me something is impossible and I'll prove you wrong, you know? Tell me it's improbable. Okay, maybe I'll believe you, but you know, there's still a chance. It's, anything can happen. You know, you say you'll never beat Usain Bolt in a race. You know what? He breaks his leg. I'm gonna run faster than him. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a threat? Yeah. 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 You can't. Is that win. positive thinking? If you have to wait for the other person to get hurt? <laughs> I was just gonna say. I was just gonna say. When you were talking about the the sports visual. If he's sleeping, I can run faster than him. <laughs> I saw it. When you were thinking about the sports visualization, one of the things I it, that that I was thinking about was the nice thing about applying this in your own personal life and in your own personal financial goals or career goals or whatever is that it doesn't have to come at the expense of somebody else. And you know, when you're talking about athletes who are like, oh, well, I got to visualize the game. Well, somebody's going to lose in that situation. But the nice thing about moving forward with your own life is it doesn't have to be a situation where there's somebody else who's losing. And I and I kind of like that aspect of you know personal positivity and, and reaching for your own goals as well. Yeah. But if you pay off your own debt, what about all the poor banks? <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor banks. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, no because okay. we pay. Because I said when people. we pay off our debt and we're productive, we pay more taxes and then just because, taxes just can because go to bail the, the Supreme, banks. Just because the Supreme Court says that they're people doesn't mean I believe they're people. <laughs> there we go. Tom's like, back away. You know, I, I can't remember who said it because I, I, all these different quotes flying through my head, but I, I want to say it uh, was Henry Ford. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. And that kind of is really what it gets down to is to, if you think you can't, because that's the story you play over and over and over your head in your uh, over and again in your head, you're not going to because there's no reason for you to if you think you can't. But if you think you can, you're going to play out that story until you figure out how that is going to happen. Yeah. And that's what John and I did with our debt. We, you know, we could have said, oh, well, this is so much money. This is going to take us forever to pay off. and We're never going to have fun and never, 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 no, no, no. That's not the story we played in our head. The story we played in our head was, can you imagine what it's going to be like when we're going to be debt free? Can you imagine what we're going to be able to do? how we're going to feel, no more stress. Those are the stories we played over and over in our, again in, in our head. And that's what helped us pay off $1,000. So we got to 50, pay off $5,000. So we got to $45,000. It was, and it was the, those stories that helped us say to ourselves, I'm going to choose this kind of vacation instead of this kind of vacation. I'm going to choose to drive this kind of car versus this kind of car. We're going to go to, fast food or we're going to make dinner at home instead of going out with our friends for a happy hour and spending $150 on drinks and a nice dinner. It's those kinds of, it was that kind of positive story that really helped us win our $51,000 back. So did you have to convince yourself that it was better to stay in and make dinner? <laughs> <laughs> We did, actually. <laughs> you kind of have to convince, because there are sometimes I find myself like going, I am really going to make myself believe this thing. <laughs> so, this I mean, is did going you to be a really that? good dinner. <laughs> <laughs> it's be amazing. Yeah, you know, it was, a, it was a culture shock for us because at the time, part of the way we acquired so much debt was because we were in the heart of the gay lifestyle, going to the clubs every weekend, buying new clothes that we couldn't afford every weekend, so we didn't wear the same thing over and over again. <laughs> <sighs> Having the, you know, the newest phones was, was all about you know, who you wore and what you had. And so we did have to sort of convince ourselves that you know, staying home in the basement, watching something on, um, but what did we have? Was it TiVo? We had TiVo. Um, that watching something on TiVo was just as fun you know, as going to a club and, and dancing until <laughs> um, so yeah, we did have to force ourselves to do that. But you know, it's just we had to repeat that habit over and over again so that it became real. And eventually, we realized the goals that we were achieving were much more rewarding than going out and dancing. Uh, we're losing you guys a little bit, um, but but to just interject a little bit. I think that lifestyle is something that a lot of people fall into. You know, it's like, let me just go out and live it now, and then we'll see what happens. But then you do that too much, and then what happens is you get to a point where you can't do that anymore because you're broke. Um, and, and, you know, I, or it's just keeping up with the Joneses. I'm going to do what everybody else does. You know, we hear different variations of that over and over and over and over again. Um, it's just funny how when you actually take care of all your finances and, and you can get out of debt and, and you get to that other side, and you've made all those sacrifices, you may not have spent or done all the things you may have wanted to do, but getting that debt off your back just feels so good. And that somehow or other, that freedom really is worth getting rid of the debt. Yeah. And it's a funny I, thing that you wouldn't necessarily believe, but you know, once that's done, it does really lift a weight off your shoulders that you really can't describe until it happens. Absolutely. Right. I, I hear a lot of people say, but I, you know, I want it all and I, I want it all and I want to be able to do everything. And I agree, you can do and have everything. You just have to earn it. And so what are you going to do to earn it is the question. You're going to either earn it now or you're going to earn it later. And it's going to be a pain to try to earn it later when you're trying to pay it off at 15, 20, 25% annual interest rate. You're going to have to earn 
15, 20, 25 percent more every year just to pay off all that stuff that you're anchoring yourself to in the past. I mean, that's one of the things that, that uh, it's a meme that I put out there every once in a while that our spending today on credit is anchoring our future earnings to the past. And that's really kind of what you're doing is you're, you're just throwing this anchor out there and saying, I'm going to stay here in February of 1994 because I decided to buy a thousand dollar golf clubs that are still not paid off. You know, and it's it, that's what happens. You know, it, that's how people end up having credit card debt that lasts for decades. I mean, you know, it, when when I tell our story, um, I acquired my first credit card debt um, in 1994 when my <laughs> parents co-signed out a credit card for me so I could go to Ireland on a vacation, and it was supposed to be for emergencies and. There were no emergencies, but that credit card was maxed out when I got home. <laughs> yeah. And you had debt from 92 or 94? And right, that. that lasted until 2006. So oh, it was, yeah, 2007 wow. actually. So it was 13 <laughs> years, 13 years of credit card debt. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of us, you know, a lot of times we're spending money, we're going out and buying things, we're buying experiences. And you know we're chasing after things because we think these things are gonna make us happy or they're gonna make us feel fulfilled or or whatever. And we're just not content living our lives unless we're spending or doing something. And you know a lot of for me personally, I, I found that I it wasn't until I just became content with what I had. And like you guys talked about earlier about having that attitude of, of gratitude, just being grateful for all the things that you already have. It, it was only then that I, I realized I, I didn't need to buy the newest phone or, you know, be spending money on these expensive trips or, or whatever. So I, I like a, a one quote that I remember reading somewhere. It was something like, uh, allow your convictions, not your circumstances, to determine your contentment. So like that. that's really good. So, you, you know, it's the idea of be content, not by what is happening around you, but just by your convictions and Say, you know, hey, I'm going to be grateful and I'm going to be content with what I have. I don't need to go out and spend a ton of money to be happy. So, yeah. And that's a, liber that's a liberating feeling to have. You know, when you're focused on always needing to acquire new things, y you can try to acquire things every day, all day, for the rest of your life, and you could never be content. But if you achieve mm -hmm. that, that feeling of contentment, then you've succeeded. You're done. You know, just focus on being happy. Well, that's a, I think that's a good point, too, is because if your focus is on this outside thing of how much do I have, there's always more you can have. You will never, ever, ever get all there is. And there will. And, and then if you start comparing yourself to other people and saying, you know, how much do I have as compared to this other person, there will always be somebody who has more. And yeah. so you really kind of do have to get in that habit of looking inside yourself and saying, well, what matters to me and am I – doing the things with my money that matter to me the most because you'll never ever be you know, there's always going to be somebody with more or somebody uh, who who's better at something and if you peg all of your stuff on these things outside things that you really can't control then where where are you going to be at and you'll just spend all your money chasing that right i think that's why you, know, you see in the news oftentimes these billionaire ceos who run their companies in the, into the ground doing illegal things, trying to make more money, and you think to yourself, well, gosh, you have a billion dollars. How much more do you need? You know, I'd, I'd, be, fine with, I'd be fine with a million dollars. You know, and I think that's what it is. It's like, <laughs> Just give me 500000 and let me go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, but I think that's, you know, you can never be content if you keep looking for outside things to, to provide you that contentment. You have to look within, within yourself. Yeah, it goes back to the quote uh, when they asked John, John D. Rockefeller, uh, how much was enough? And he he said uh, just one dollar more. <laughs> right. Exactly. But that's like the addict. I just need one more drink, or I just need one more cigarette, yep. or whatever. You know, they just always need one more and go on in per perpetuity. I mean, that goes into we we talk about it in a lot of different episodes, but uh, you know, it's finding the things that you value, and and then going after that. You know, realizing that the things that you don't value, that's what you could let go of, and then why do you value these things, and that's why you're you're working hard towards them, you know, as far as is reaching your goals. Um, but, you know, I, I wanted to just jump back to a little bit about reframing um, things and, and other people's stories. It, it seems like if you look at any 
successful business or person, um, you think that people are overnight successes and you always hear about that and everything's glorified that way. But then when you, you really hear their stories, um, it's really just a road of failure after failure and that something then takes traction. Uh, and, and it's always amazing to hear that. And it's, to me, that's uh, in a way inspiring because it means that, you know, when I'm doing something and it fails, it's not necessarily the end. Yeah. You know, you're gonna talk about there. You're gonna... <laughs> we have, we have a, a meme that, or we share it every once in a while on, on Facebook or Twitter. Um, and it's the iceberg. And, you know, you look at the iceberg and what you see above the water and below the water. And what you see below the water is usually 75 to 90 percent of the size of the iceberg. And everybody sees the work that's sticking out of the water. And that's what they say you did to get to your success. And it's everything below the water that you know that you put in your blood, sweat and tears in. And only the people that are close to you know that. And you know, when that, that could easily become a negative thing for you. You know, if you think, oh my God, it's going to take, this is going to take so much work. It's, it's so hard. It's so difficult. But the success and the reward that comes from that is worth it because of the self-satisfaction. When you lay down at night and you close your eyes, I mean, there are times when John and I lay there and, you know, we, we talk a little bit before we go to bed about the things that are, we're excited about and things that we're happy about. And, you know, we've, we've put in a 12, 15 hour day of work and we're exhausted and we have to think to ourselves sometimes, this is our, this is our ice, the underwater iceberg. And this is what we're, what excites us is that we're putting on all this work so that someday we have that, that success. I mean, we're already starting to see some of it, but when you see that above the water success and, you know, it, it really, it, it make, if it makes you happy and it keeps you in a positive space, then that's, you know, that's what's important. So we do have a question here from Robert Farrington of the College Investor, and um, he's asking, "What are your thoughts on staying positive on long-term goals when you face short-term adversity?" <laughs> it's it, the reality is is that um, every day we're going to face something. Life that it, it, I was listening to um, uh, a podcast by. Uh, Fletcher Ellison, I think is his name, Go uh, Go Coach Fletch. And uh, he talked about um, the scenario with his kids in his household and how they're always saying, well, that's not fair, or they always get, or I never get. And so I think we're raised with this mentality uh, of, uh, of adversity, and we face adversity on a daily basis, whether it's driving to work or our boss or our family, you know, it, that – that there are always going to be those small hurdles that we we have to overcome, um, and for me, one of the driving motivators in overcoming those and saying I can get through this is because I have long-term goals. If I don't have long-term goals, then those in front of me all of a sudden become mountains, and they're the insurmountable things. It's that long-term goal that's going to motivate me to keep going because I see the road and the path ahead of me. And I think you need to know why those long-term goals are important for you. Somebody said this, alluded to this earlier. If you know why those long-term goals are important to you, you can refer back to that every time you struggle or you think about just giving up. Why is it I wanted to achieve that goal to begin with? And I think uh, part of what I'm working on right now is saying, you know, it's it's not it's not the end of the world if you're not like on track or completely following whatever timeline you think you should be on. Uh, a lot of the time I'll run into days where it's like, I'm like today I'm going to be super productive. And then it's just one thing after another. And it's like death by a thousand paper cuts. All these <laughs> little, all of these little things are just these minor annoyances like that. If this one thing happened today, it wouldn't be the end of the world. But why do all of the minor annoyances have to converge upon me at once? Right. And I think um, being able to say, well, you know, I didn't do as much as I wanted to do today. Uh, I didn't exercise today, whatever it was, or I, you know, I didn't get bills paid today, or whatever, whatever stupid thing it was. <laughs> uh, you, you can sit there and say, well, you know, um, that that doesn't mean that it's all over and I have to stop immediately. I, you know, there is there is always that hope in tomorrow. I think. Yeah, absolutely. And you can't beat yourself up for you know getting sidetracked or or, or getting frustrated or giving up maybe even for like the 
the day or, or a couple of hours. Um, just as long as you can get back on track, and that's the important thing. And I think that's why it's important to know what your long-term goals are and why they're your goals. And I'm gonna. Sorry. Oh well, I was just gonna say, you know, sometimes you have to stay fluid too, and um, it's okay if your long-term goals change also. You know, I think sometimes people put and get like very myopic, and, and they think that they have this one goal and they have to stick to it no matter what, and then they forget that, you know, maybe that's really not their value anymore, and they let things get to them or or they they just chase after something that's really not there for them. So it's okay if things change, and as long as you realize it and you kind of look at your own whys every once in a while. Yeah. Um, it's okay to be sidetracked because maybe that track goes somewhere else that's better for you too. And, and because he asked the question, I'm going to use a, I'm going to use an investor analogy here. Um, yeah. Minus the last couple of days and the psychotic nature of the market, but if <laughs> if you're an investor and you see that the market is down 100 points one day, you don't throw in the towel and say it's this is it, I'm done. You know, you you look at that and you say. Okay, we've had a down day. Now we're gonna have a, you know, we're gonna have an up day, and bye, bye, and bye. and hopefully, you know, <laughs> you continue to have that upward trajectory <laughs> with your life, just like we do with investing. It'll, you'll you'll reach your financial goals. So it's time to find the bargains in your life. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all in the frame. Everything else just went on sale. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Isn't that like what Buffett says, basically? You know, it's like <laughs> that is his strategy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Again, it, it just comes back down to, you know, when you're going through those short-term struggles, thinking about what's important in your life, what you're grateful for. You know, your your family, your faith, your friends, those. Things that are really important to you, and then you look at those long-term goals and why you're focused on those things. And again, it's going to be because of those things that are important to you. And so the, those small everyday things that are getting in your way, those adversities, they they tend to kind of melt away a little bit when you start focusing on the things that are important. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Great question, Robert, and thank you for for posting it for us. Um, we're coming on an hour here, so what we like to do is kind of sum up things at the end of our show and um, give our final thoughts on the subject. So, Miranda, if you'll give us your final thoughts on the power of positive thinking and reaching your financial goals. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I think having a plan, uh, like we touched on earlier, is really important in having, having that work to back it up. So being able to... And I think a big part of it is making sure that your plan is broken down into achievable steps, things that you can do. And there are some days when um, I look at everything that I still have left to do, and I just say, you know, if I can just get one thing done today, that'll be a victory, and that's something to celebrate, and, and just sort of breaking it down and, and moving forward that way uh, to, to kind of move on your track. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I've run down. <laughs> Somebody else go. <laughs> Peter, what are your th final thoughts? All right. I'll leave you with a, a Zig Ziglar quote again. I like him. Uh, expect the best, prepare for the worst, and capitalize on what comes. So just use your positive thinking as, as a catalyst for action. You know, Don't just let your positive thinking be magical thinking where, oh, it's, good things are going to happen. Go out there and use that positive thinking as a catalyst for action to make things make good things happen. Tom, your final thoughts? Uh, well, I sort of mentioned it before, is just that positive, positivity can equal productivity. Uh, if, if you're not thinking about something positively, you are just going to be sitting on the couch eating chocolate muffins or whatever. Don't knock it off the chocolate muffins. But if, if you let you guys, you guys into that sort of negative thinking, yeah, you, you really don't get things done, and then it just gets worse, and it's sort of a downward spiral from there. Yeah, I mean, I'll throw in some thoughts. Um, it, I don't think it's like just this, this, these magical sun rays that come down. You know, if I think good thoughts, things are going to happen to me. But I think it does frame the way you approach problems. So when you're always negative, you're kind of always closing a door. But at least if you try to remain positive about things, it, it opens up other opportunities. You see the opportunities that you're there, that are there, and you have the opportunity to take advantage of them. Um, and, and I think that's the difference, and that's sort of like the, the magical luck that a lot of people think is there, but really it's just that you're seeing opportunities that have always been there that you might have clouded yourself with. 
Um, yeah, Dead Free Guys, David, John, what are your final thoughts? Um, I'm going to also do a quote. Um, mine is, uh, this is probably one of my mantras in life. I live by, I have it pasted up in my cube at work. Um, it's from Napoleon Hill from his Think and Grow Rich. He said, uh, no one drifts to success. And the reason I love that is because it, it, it puts in my mind, it puts the, the image of somebody who's sitting in a boat. And you can either just sit there and let the waves or the current take you wherever it is and that's what negativity does or that's what uh, having that meh attitude in life does to you or you can grab the paddle figure out where you want to go and then start moving in that direction and to me it's the it's when the it's the the thought process between your head and the paddle hitting the water is the positive thinking and it's the paddle in the water is the is the action moving you towards whatever goal it is that you want to get to. So um, put the thought process in your head and then grab the paddle and let's get going. And uh, yeah. John, do you want to add to that? <laughs> sure. Uh, I, I think what I would add to that is regardless of whatever situation you're in, no matter how bleak it seems and how impossible it may seem, there's a good chance that you're in that situation for a reason. And you could, if you overcome that, you can turn that negative situation into a positive situation. And when we were in, our, in the basement with $51,000 worth of credit card debt, it seemed horrible. I mean, in fact, it was dark in there because we were in the basement <laughs> below the ground. And getting out just seemed impossible. And I wouldn't have thought that, you know, 10 years later we'd be here talking to all you people. So, um, you know, whatever situation you're in, you can turn into a positive and, and, and maybe help somebody. Great thoughts, everyone. Um, John, David? Uh, for those people who, out there who may not be familiar with the work you do, um, if you could tell us a little bit about Debt Free Guys, sure, and where people can find more about you. Yeah. We are uh, we have our website uh, where our blog is at debtfreeguys.com, where we encourage people to live debt free, have fun, and be money conscious. And that's really a kind of our focus is help people to be money conscious and understand uh, why and where they're spending their money. Uh, and then we have uh, several ebooks and uh, a hard copy book where we kind of guide people towards uh, being money conscious, uh, having a positive plan uh, in place for their life, or the four principles of a debt free life. That's really kind of our focus. We really want to help people free themselves from these these chains of debt. So, so go out there, and make sure you take a look at debt free guys. Thank you again for joining us tonight and sharing your expertise. Um, thank you, everybody else out there, for watching and listening. And until next week, be good with your money. Thanks for joining us on the Money Mastermind Show. Get more information at moneymastermindshow.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes and YouTube and follow us on Google+.